Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Ford's Theater, and a welcome as well to everyone watching live at the National Portrait Gallery and those who are watching online around the world. We have come together on this night and at this time because of what happened within these walls 150 years ago. That night, an audience filled this place to overflowing to celebrate the end of a war, to celebrate it with laughter and music, and to cheer the man who had led them through it. Their evening came to a terrible end by witnessing a tragedy unprecedented in American history. For those of us filling the theater tonight, we can't avoid recalling that tragedy. The flag draped box will always be a part of our history. And at the end of this performance, we invite you to join us on 10th Street for a vigil recreating the hours preceding the death of a president in a house across the street. He was losing interest in politics when the repeal of the Missouri Compromise in 1854 aroused him as never before. He took to the stump and, as he later said, what I have done since is pretty well known. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe that this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the house to fall. I do not expect the union to dissolve, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. Let North and South, let all Americans, let all lovers of liberty everywhere join in the great and good work if we do this, we shall not only have saved the Union, but we shall have so saved it as to make and to keep it forever worthy of the saving. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. Abraham Lincoln. rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who have fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here, dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. 
that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall, shall not, not perish from, from the earth. earth. Tell me, my father, tell me how Boys keep dying for freedom's song before we find a place to belong. Tell me, my father, how long won't bow to no man? I've got my pride. This dream on dreaming can't be. How long till I can sing freedom's song? Tell me, my father, how long I cry. My tears, the same as any man you see. So, God, please tell me why we all ain't free. As you can imagine, it would take a remarkable sense of humor for a man to endure everything Abraham Lincoln did. And if there was one trait Lincoln was known for far and wide, it was his humorous perspective on life. During his years riding the judicial circuit in Illinois, the lawyers and judges would crowd into country taverns and inns, swapping jokes and stories with gusto. Lincoln acquired a reputation as the best of them all, in spite or perhaps because of his equally well-known melancholy. Now, Lincoln never claimed to have devised any of the anecdotes with which he regaled folks. I do generally remember a good story when I hear it, but I never did invent anything original. I am only a retail dealer. <laughs> well, even so, more than a few people considered his stories proof, at the very least, of his lack of dignity and in some cases, a refusal to take anything seriously. As, for instance, Senator Wade from Ohio, who called to urge the president to dismiss General Grant. You know, Wade, that puts me in mind of a little story. Story be damned! You are the father of every military blunder that was ever used in this war. This, this country of your pig-headedness is going down the road to perdition, sir. And I suppose you could tell a story if you were only a mile away from hell. Well, now, that is just about the distance from here to the capital, isn't it? <laughs> but of course, all this had a reason, as he well knew. As he said to another complaining congressman, Ashley! I have great confidence in you and great respect for you. And I know how sincere you are. But if I couldn't tell these stories, I would die. Now you sit down. So the man who could say about the army. They dwindled on the march like a shovel full of fleas pitched from one place to the other. Or about the too many office seekers 
for too few positions. The fact is, I have got more pigs than I have tits. <laughs> Could also say about himself. My opponent, my opponent says that I am a two-faced man. If I had another face, do you think I would wear this one? <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Most powerful of all were the words he spoke on March the 4th. In his second inaugural address, though the war was not yet over, Lincoln struck a note of mercy, born of humility, yielding to justice, that has echoed from that day to this. With malice, toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him, who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations.
when lilacs last in dawnyard bloomed and the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourned and yet shall mourn with ever returning spring, ever returning spring, trinity sure to me you bring, lilac blooming perennial and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. Mm -hmm.